Transitions are the most fluid and receptive moments in the presidential cycle to have an impact on the policy process. President Obama is condemning the, the results of Egypt's presidential election have Israel's just been Prime announced. Minister a huge crowd again to gathered. Counting known Hezbollah operatives, for example, doesn't capture the whole picture. There is a, a spectrum of sympathy, support, and then trained operatives. Importantly, you have parties standing by, radical Islamists and others, who are ready to exploit these grievances and say that it is the United States that's to blame, or Israel that's to blame, or, or somebody else that's to Again, blame. this is a region that has been in tumult for the past 30 years. There is an undercurrent of violence that runs through it. Next door in Syria, civil war is brewing. It could turn into sectarian and ethnic war, and that could spill over into the Turkey. The passage of time in Syria is our biggest enemy. Um, if we want to limit the danger of this becoming a jihadist successor regime, then we have to speed up the process of change. And they're inflicting this steady toll of attrition, not just in combat operations, but in, in through defections. But the most important thing is that is for the United States to achieve uh, President Obama's policy objective of getting President Assad to step aside. Yeah, first preference sanctions work. The South, this issue solved peacefully everyone's happiest. The second preference, I think, would be that Israel could back off and that the United States that has greater capability and a longer timeline could deal with it. Iran cannot be permitted to have nuclear weapons. That's why there's a commitment to prevention, not to containment. Let me get your reaction. What do you think of these new sanctions? Uh, well, they'll help. Uh, will they do the business? Um, probably not. We need more than that. Well, the U.S. Treasury Department has spent the last few years going around the world and saying to bankers that you may think there's a profit opportunity here by playing fast and loose with the rules, but you're wrong. In person, he's quite hostile towards, towards Westerners and uh, consistently says that he wants Egypt to be an Islamic state. Now you have a, a government in Egypt led by President Morsi, who comes from the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, who are connected organically uh, to Hamas. Can we take Mohammed Morsi, who's a Muslim Brotherhood leader, and right. make him into a constructive leader for regional stability in this uh, region? This whole campaign and the fighting is really strengthening Hamas at the expense of Fatah, and we'll see how that plays out in the, in the months ahead.